Did you know that the Dutch Republic was the first republic that was established in the early modern history? It happened during an 80 years revolt against Spanish rule. In this video you are going to learn how the Netherlands, back then referred to as the Low Countries, established themselves as a republic. Stay tuned. Hey, if this is your first time here, my name is Stefan, I'm a history teacher and I'm hustling history for you. And if you like this content and you like history and all kinds of other related things, please consider subscribing, do hit the notification bell to become part of the hustle. Let's start. Do understand that in the early Middle Ages, the Netherlands as a country did not exist. The area of what is now the Netherlands, but also Belgium, Luxembourg and even Northern France was referred to as the Low countries there just like in the rest of europe there were autarctic settlements villages as you will where farmers worked and produced their own food now in the region of flanders what is now northern belgium this area here there the ground was very fertile and so there was a surplus of food so now people could focus on other things so there were farmers that herded sheep and the wool of those sheep was used to fabricate high quality broth cloth even so the artisans that made the broth cloth at some point imported wool from england Therefore, the cities that were located there, and I'm talking about Brugge, Ghent, Brussel, Ypres, these cities became vital trading hubs. Several of these cities became interconnected and they formed an alliance, the so-called Hanseatic League. Then there was also the process of state building and this was started by Philip II from France. Yet a successionist dispute led to the Hundred Years War that even lasted longer than 100 years. Now during this conflict, the Duchy of Burgundy went its own course and started the conquest of many territories of the Low Countries. Burgundy state building failed and the state building of France did not and that's basically why France is as of today a nation and Burgundy is a region within this nation. And in the south of the Netherlands, Burgundis also means lavishly eating and drinking. Anyhow, the only daughter of the Burgundian ruler married an Austrian prince. And therefore, the low countries that were on the Burgundy rule before now came into the hands of the Habsburg Empire. The Habsburg was a mighty Austrian imperial family. The House of Habsburg would deliver the kings of Bohemia Hungary, Croatia, Galicia, Portugal and Spain. One factor we should definitely not overlook is the power of the cities. As I mentioned before, these cities became vital trading hubs in the southern low countries. There were cities like Bruges, Brussels, Ypres and Ghent. And in the northern low countries, we had Deventer, Zutphen and Zwolle that became vibrant trading hubs. Then there was also the powerful region of Holland that developed itself with shipping and trading. And so a new class was born. I'm talking about the bourgeois in Dutch, the burgerij. These people held out in the cities and formed a strong and mighty position against the noblemen who had their might and wealth because of agriculture. From 15 15, Charles V became the new Habsburg ruler in the Low Countries and acquired the whole of the Low Countries with the exception of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Liège. The empire of Charles V was enormous. The Habsburg Empire had territories all over Europe, not to mention its overseas possessions. It was said that in the empire of Charles V, the sun never sets. Now to get a firmer grip on the Low Countries, Charles V implemented a centralization policy that was carried out from the city of Brussels. His predecessor Philip the Good had already started with this by creating a monetary system. Now Charles V succeeded by this with, by introducing a taxing system. So there were taxes now on beer, on wine and broth clothes and these taxations were carried out by the regions, the provinces, in Dutch de Gewesten, themselves. The problem was that the provinces became richer and richer instead of Charles V. 
So basically, the whole plan to centralize the Low Countries backfired. Now, this here was not the only problem Charles V, who wanted to get a grip on his empire, faced. Because in the German states, the Reformation had kicked off. Now, Reformation is actually not a really correct term. Why? Well, basically, it led to a split in the Roman Catholic Church. From now, we had Roman Catholics and Protestants. Protestantism spread like wildfire in the Low Countries. And Charles V and also his succeeding son, Philip II, they prosecuted these Protestants. Now many Protestants burned at the stake and as a result of this, it turned many promises against the rule of Philip II. In 1566, Dutch noblemen begged their king to stop these prosecutions. It's also known as the supplication of the nobles, in Dutch, Smeekschrift der Edelen. While Philip left for Spain, a regent ruled on his behalf, and that regent stopped the prosecution of Protestants. Now this let the cat out of the bag, because now all of a sudden, Protestants started preaching all over the place. That summer, the situation totally escalated. See, Protestants believed that statues of holy figures should not be worshipped. So they stormed the Roman Catholic churches in the Low Countries and smashed these statues to bits. This is also known as the Statue Storm, in Dutch, Beeldenstorm. Philip II, he was furious and he sent the Duke of Alva to re-establish order. And this Duke of Alva was also known as Iron Alva. Many people were prosecuted and burned at the stake again. And as a reaction to this, many people of the Low Countries just fled the area. And one of these people was the Dutch nobleman William of Orange. He fled to the German states only to return in 1568 with an army. Yes, the Dutch revolt that would last for 80 years had now begun. Now the campaign of William of Orange in the beginning did not fare well, but he wasn't alone because from the sea rebels known as Watergeuse captured many Dutch coastal cities from the Spanish. And so many cities in the Low Countries turned their allegiance towards the insurgency. The Duke of Alva started a counter-military campaign to suppress the uprising. Within the insurgents, there were different views on the matter. See, there were, let's say, hardline Protestants, Calvinists to be more precisely, who wanted everyone had to adjust to the new faith. But people like William of Orange, they were more moderate because they believed in freedom of religion. William of Orange had every reason to believe this because he needed as much allies as possible to win this war. Spain was experiencing a crisis of its own. It lacked money. Because the taxation plans of earlier had backfired, it was also waging costly wars against countries as Turkey and France. When in 1576 the Spanish troops in the city of Antwerp hadn't had their payments, they started a mutiny and sacked the city. Many civilians were slaughtered by the Spanish mutineers. So therefore, because of the uprising, many local people also suffered tremendously. In the same year, the pacification of Ghent was signed. It was basically a reconciliation of the different provinces within the Low Countries because some of them up to this point had been loyal to the Spanish King Philip II. However, they also saw that these Spanish mutineers that marauded their country needed to be expelled. So therefore, they switched their allegiance. It was also agreed that the provinces of Holland and Zeeland would become Protestant and the rest would remain Catholic. However, after the pacification was signed, Calvinists took power in many cities that 
had to remain Catholic according to the treaty. So therefore many Catholics now switched their allegiance to the Spanish king again. The southern part of the Low Countries came under Spanish control again. In 1579, the northern provinces signed the Union of Utrecht, where they allied themselves against Spanish aggression. In 1581, Philip II declared the leader of the insurgency, William of Orange, an outlaw. And therefore, the Dutch provinces denounced him as a king. The act of abjuration, also known as the Plakkaat der Verlatingen. This happened in 1581. The Dutch provinces weren't a republic yet because they looked for a king. They tried France, they tried England, but both attempts ended up in failure. In 1584, the leader of the insurgency, William of Orange, was assassinated by the French Catholic Balthasar Gerard in the Dutch city of Delft. In 1588, the Dutch Republic was established also known as the Republiek der Zeven Verenigde Nederlanden. These seven united provinces were Groningen, Friesland, Overijssel, Gelderland, Utrecht, Holland and Zeeland. Drenthe was also included, but because of its low population, had no vote in the States General. The Dutch Republic was now established. The war against Spain, however, was far from over. The 80 years war would last to the year of 1648, and I'll eventually cover this war more fully, so keep an eye out on this channel. The borders from back then were much more dispersed than they are now. There are some current exceptions, and I went to one of these peculiar exceptions and that is the case of Barla Hertog and Barla Nassau. I made a video about that on location so check that one out right here. Please consider of becoming a patron because with your donations I just can keep doing this and expand. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe and tot ziens.